welcome to Field Sports Britain, coming to you this week from the Kelmarsh Game and Country Fair in Northamptonshire. Coming up, American Invaders, we're after naughty Mr Mink. Thinking about a puppy, we ask the experts what to look for. Long distance shots, it's pest control, but we're asking what's sporting. Evening all, Team Wild is after rabbits when the police get involved. First, the first in our new series, Splat of the Week. What does an air gun pellet do to an egg? We kick off with a humble chicken egg, the perfect package for the first Test Splat Special. For this trial run, we're using an Air Arc S410 in 2-2. The camera picks up the flight of the pellet and it's a fantastic result. To spice things up a bit, we upgrade to a goose egg and a 243 100 grain bullet at 100 metres. Just for fun, how far do you think the eggshell splat will travel from the point of entry? Will it be A, 7 metres 20 centimetres, or B, 5 metres 40 centimetres, or C, 2 metres 30 centimetres? Another successful splat. The tape measure confirms fragments of the goose egg have been thrown 7 metres 20 centimetres or nearly 24 feet. If you chose A, give yourself a prize. Back to the air rifle and another goose egg. This time the large hard-shelled egg is split rather than destroyed and it's a disappointing 42 centimetres. That's about a cubit in old money. That's quite enough of that. Nothing proved, nothing gained, but fun all the same. Next week we shoot a joint of pork which has risen from the depths of the deep freeze. Look out for ricochets. If you enjoyed that, you might want to see other splats we have filmed. Now it's April, the cruelest month. Easter, bunnies and chicks are making a feast for an American invader, the mink. Introduced to the UK from the USA in the late 1920s, mink was primarily to be bred for its fur. However, a large number of these captive animals escaped or were released by well-meaning animal activists. It quickly wreaked havoc across the country, decimating British wildlife. Brilliant. This successful predator kills all sorts of bird and animal species and can have a significant financial impact on businesses like fish farms and fishing lakes. This morning we are up before the crack of dawn to see if we can shoot one or two before the fishermen arrive. It's quite exciting for me to come out and uh, go for uh, something that I've never played with before. We've trapped them before, um, but it's not something that I've ever thought about doing, sitting out and waiting for them, so it'll be quite interesting to see how we do. Um, as I say, the, the farmer here said that the fishermen normally see them lurking about the first light, so he reckons this, they normally arrive or start hunting um, within the first hour of daylight. The ball hens are really a good indicator to see what's going on. Um, and I want to state I know of with the arrival of the mink, the moor hen uh, population just disappeared. It was uh, almost overnight. So uh, I know here that they've been, uh, they really have been hammering the waterfowl. But also um, they've got a lot of young fish stock in here. Um, and they've also been doing the, uh, the freshwater uh, mussels as well. So you're finding, uh, well, they're, they're finding lots of piles of shells and stuff. So very, very interesting little animal to uh, get on top of. Roy has been told they are often active during the first hour of daylight. This morning it seems everything else is up and at them apart from our mink. Plan B is for us to set a trap and come back tomorrow. We get there before light and again there's no show. But there's that Christmas morning feeling that the traps might have caught us a mink. Last night I decided that was enough and we were going to set some traps. So uh, we're just going to check a couple of traps this morning that I've set along the river. And uh, because I think what the mink are doing, where there's so much food around along the riverbank, there's a lot of young rabbits, there's a lot of starters running around. And I think what they're doing is just going through, going through the earth, catching a couple of rabbits and not bothering coming into the main lakes. Unfortunately, nothing in the traps, but uh, we'll leave the, uh, the traps running for the next few days and, uh, and see what we get. Obviously, when you've got traps out, you've got to check them at least every 24 hours. So uh, we'll, uh, we shall be toodling down and seeing what's in there, but I can uh, guarantee we won't be down here at 4.30 in the morning again for a little while. Oh well. When we do succeed, and succeed we will, we'll need something to deal with it. So back to Kelmarsh for some shopping. Hi Tony Mink. Yes. What would you choose to shoot a mink? Okay, well we have two rifles really suitable. 
We have the Daystate Huntsman Classic here and the Daystate Mark IV here. Uh, the Classic is, as its name implies, uh, a Daystate rifle that's styled to look like a conventional hunting rifle. Yep. Mechanical operation with a pre-charged cylinder. So it's a high power air rifle, it'll, uh, you can have it in 12 foot pounds or you can have it in FAC rated up to 30 foot pounds. You've got to shoot them across rivers, so you, you know, you're up to 30 feet at, at times. No problem at all. Uh, really in a 177 calibre, which would be my choice for uh, mink, I would say it would probably go out to about 35, even 40 yards. It's, that's well over your, your, your distance that you want. This is the Mark IV. Now this rifle is a little bit special. It's got an electronic heart in it, so it's electronically fired. You still operate the bolt in the normal way, but there's no cocking effort, there's no spring to cock or anything like that. All you're doing is recycling the magazine. And the magazine, once it's empty, you just remove it, reload it, and then put it back in again. An electronic trigger from an electronic gun, so you get beautiful crisp firing action, and completely silent. They come with a shrouded barrel, and you can also fit another silencer. And this rifle, too, will go up to 30 foot-pounds in FAC if you have a license, and 12 foot-pounds if you don't. Retail price? Uh, just over £1,000 for one of these, and £739 for one of these, plus a scope. It's about £100 extra on top of that. The great thing about air guns is that you can use them for 30-yard shots on mink, or simply to dispatch the animal in a trap. This mink was caught by a wildfowling club that's trying to conserve its wild birds. I went to the estuary of the River X to meet Patrick Gubb of the Devon Wildfowling and Conservation Association. We have a active conservation membership during the summer and um, the mink trapping is an integral part of that. Why have you sighted it just here by a railway line on the, on the end of a ditch? Um, it's a, a good place because there's a T-junction in the dike and um, as mink are travelling through the dikes, a T-junction is a, a place that they will investigate. So they'll, they'll stop here and, and what does a mink trap, this, this mink trap do? Does, does it doesn't actually catch mink, does it? Um, no, at this, at this stage it's in what they call a monitoring mode. So there's a clay substrate inside which stays moist through oasis being water being dragged through an oasis to keep the clay moist and as the mink or anything go across it, it um, records their footprints. If you found footprints, what would you do next? Um, if I find footprints, I put a, a live cage trap inside under the tunnel and within three or four days, if there's been a lot of evidence of traffic, um, you should catch the mink. You can buy a mink raft or you can make your own. Instructions are on the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust website www.gwct.org.uk. For more about the work of the Devon Wildfowlers, visit www.devonwildfowlers.org.uk. We are big on dealing with troublesome Americans. Click on the squirrel to see what we did to that. Now it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. First, we bring you Foxes, and Channel 4 will broadcast Foxes Live, Wild in the City, this coming Monday, April the 30th at 8 pm. Don't expect it to be 100% positive about fox shooting, but we have been working to educate Channel 4's production company. You'll recognise some of our own fox shooting footage, including big foxes and baby snatching ones too. The follow-up programmes are on the 7th and 8th of May, again at 8pm. King Juan Carlos of Spain has made a right royal apology after it was discovered he'd been on an all-expenses-paid African safari to cull elephant. The Spanish monarch was caught out after falling over while on the trip in Botswana. Most of the bad press appears to have focused on the king having an expensive holiday and not the elephant hunting. However, the Spanish branch of the World Wildlife Fund aren't very happy and they want their honorary president to stand down. The ISSF Shooting World Cup is on at the moment in London at the Olympic venue in Woolwich. But why would you know that? The ISSF is not allowing us to film there, nor is it even allowing the usual number of technicians on the site to mend broken down guns. We can't show you any footage, but Team GB Olympic medal hopeful Peter Wilson came seventh in the double trap. 
Former Olympic gold medalist Richard Folds came 31st and Stephen Walton 32nd. Women's Olympic track hopefuls Abby Burton and Charlotte Kerwood will be competing later this week. The 12-day event, which includes rifle, pistol and shotgun disciplines, ends on the 29th of April 2012. The world's best free fly fishing show is back. Sportfish Reading is promising a weekend of lakeside fun and fishing at Haywards Farm on the 12th and 13th of May. Sportfish is offering the biggest names in fishing including TV stars Matt Hayes and John Wilson together with Simon Gorsworth, Andy Murray and all the big names in fishing tackle. Ian Gordon will be on hand to talk you through the fantastic new technology in the new Hardy Zenith Syntrix range of double-handed fly rods. And you can see the Spayworks rods featured in the new film Salmon Fishing in the Yemen. Visit sportfish.co.uk for more details. Farmers are furious as badgers may get a reprieve. A judge has ruled against the British government's badger cull, which means the matter goes to the High Court. Badgers carry bovine tuberculosis, which has led to the slaughter of tens of thousands of cattle. But as yet, no badgers. The government wants pilot culls of badgers to take place in the autumn. And finally, we've got a big rat. Viewer Davy Thomas shot this monster rat with his Air Arms S410K in 177 calibre. It measured 19 inches. Last year, viewer Mark Lowry of Hartlepool shot an 18 inch rat, a record beaten by Ryan Bleakley with a 24 incher. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next, puppies and how to choose them. We ask the experts. Puppies, what a delight. But the hideous reality, apart from the endless chewed shoes and doo-doos, is that once you have made up your mind about a litter, you only get a few minutes to choose the dog or bitch that will be your shooting companion for the next 10 years or more. Gun dog nut Laura Bacon has been organising the gun dog events for Countryman Fairs for about that time. What would I look for in a puppy? I would look for not necessarily the boldest puppy in the pack, um, maybe the one that wants to come to you, but maybe a little bit reserved, not too shy, um, kind eye. Um, what do you mean by kind eye? Kind eye, I think if you're a dog person you can tell by looking into a dog's face. You know, and I think anybody that knows dogs would agree with me. You can tell by looking into the eye, you know, what sort of temperament they're probably going to come out with. I would look at the parents breeding. I'd want to see how the parents have competed or, you know, generally what would I be looking for in that dog? Is it, you know, relevant in the parents? These days I've been looking very, very closely at the health aspects. Um, there's a lot of eye problems, a lot of hip problems. That's only in some breeds. Though. That's only in some breeds, yeah. Um, particularly my breed, which are Labradors. I like the odd Spaniel, but not many, they're too nutty. <laughs> Mike Cullum runs Stormrider Gun Dogs. For me, when I go, I really want to have a bold, forthgoing puppy. So. I don't just want the one that um, looks up when there's a noise, I want the one that comes and investigates when there's a noise. So I'm one of these anal people that sort of tap on the kennel door and, and um, maybe take a, a rolled up sock with me. I don't necessarily want the dog to, be, if it picks it up, fantastic, but I want it to be interested. I want the puppies to be healthy, look healthy. If I go look at a spaniel, if its tail's not wagging, then there's something wrong with it. Um, and similarly with a retriever, if you're going looking at any dog, it should be happy, it should be confident, and it should show all the signs of good health. As for which breed you choose, there can be no advice. It's a belief set. There are fundamentalist spaniel owners like me, and Labrador militants like Phil Price of Airgun World magazine. Uh, this is Harvey, my seven-year-old dog, and Georgie, my two-year-old bitch. <laughs> two-year-old? That's practically a puppy. She is. She Why is. did you choose Labradors? Because they're very versatile. Um, I take them out when I'm shooting rabbits with the air gun. Uh, we pick up all during the winter on pheasant and duck. And a bit of stalking, they're always in the car if I need someone to uh, help me out and follow a deer. Right, I'm going to be rude. Aren't they slightly unimaginative? Um, I also drive a Mondeo. Does that answer your question? <laughs> 
Here's a couple after my own heart. Matt shoots and I beat, so but working gun dogs. So which one's the peg dog and which one's the beating dog? Uh, I Just, think we're going to try and yeah. do a bit of both. With... They're both going to be good in different areas, I think, but I don't know, I think, I think, I think, I think Bracken will make the better peg dog than this one for beating, possibly. And why do you choose cock? It's not boring old Labrador. Uh, we wanted smaller dogs for the house as yeah, well. Yeah, smaller dogs, yeah. Uh, just keep the, in the house. Spaniels are good, loyal dogs, well, I know Labradors are, but there's, there's a lot of love in Spaniels. They'll make good family pets as well, so. Yeah, agree? Yeah. Of course it does. <laughs> My bitch had a litter last year. You can click here to see just what an anxious dad I was. Now, how far can you shoot? Or should we be asking, how far should you shoot? There's three rabbits down there in the nettles. A lot of youngsters over on the left-hand side. Roy Lupton is a good shot. Not a perfect shot, but a good shot. Much of that is simply down to practice. Today he's putting that and a misspent youth to good use. He's already made a good impression on the rabbits on this pasture land, but the farmer says he'd prefer it if there were even fewer. He would also like Roy to knock over a few corvids if the opportunity arises. To assist, some tasty morsels are put down to tempt these shrewd birds into range. So what we're doing today um, is we're going to be shooting some long range rabbits. I say long range, it's not particularly far. We're going to be shooting at about 300 yards on the rabbits. And then on the other side, we've got some bait set up or a, a couple of carcasses out there. And we're hoping that the corvids are going to come in and feed on those. So the reason we're doing this on this particular piece of ground today is we've been lamping this ground quite hard and the rabbits now are quite lamp shy. So as soon as we get out here and they see the lamp flickering about, then they're, uh, they're running off and, uh, and bolting down the earth. So uh, all we're going to do is just try and clear up a few. Um, we've got a, a very nice vantage point here. And uh, as the rabbits just come out and feed um, this morning, we're just going to uh, take a few shots and clear a few up. Compared to some shooting, 300 yards is not a huge distance, but it is still a challenging one, and Roy will only shoot when he's confident of the result. Now, before we go any further, we should mention that we're employing some new technology this week. It's a big lens with an incredibly fast camera. If you watch a lot of shooting films on YouTube, you may have seen similar footage of airgun shooting on the channel Ted's Holdover. It brings you to within a few feet of the animal you are shooting. This is the first time we've been able to capture such close-up images of the animal in the crosshairs. And indeed for Roy, it's a very new perspective. So what does he think? I suppose the images can look a little bit shocking when you're looking at them like this. Um, but on the flip side of it, it really does just go to show that, you know, it is the, the rabbit knew nothing about it whatsoever. Um, and it's just lights out and job done. We also get a chance to get close to a few corvids. And we've got a perfect example here of why we have to keep control uh, of the corvid population. So the magpies, the carrion crows, really are devastating to uh, all of the nesting birds. If you've got a, a hedgerow, then the magpies will go through it and clear out most of the nests of the songbirds, the blackbirds, the sparrows and what have you. But whenever we do get a chance to shoot them, then we uh, will always take it. As Roy said at the start, these rabbits are not going to waste and the ferrets have plenty to be happy about. So you can see on the rabbit here that because we were employing neck and head shots, we've got no damage whatsoever to the carcass um, on all the rabbits that we've got. So you can see again on this one, neck shot, and we've got another head shot on this one. So, again, carcass is perfectly intact, all the meat's there, there's no damage to it whatsoever, and we can feed that straight to the animals. A lot of people will think that using a 22-250 for rabbit shooting is probably overgunning it somewhat. And, it, you know, to be honest, it, it is um, a lot of calibre for shooting rabbits with, but it's a clean, effective kill, it's humane, and if you're employing headshots with them, then you're still able to use the carcass at the end of the day. Can be a little bit expensive, but if you're being employed to go in and do a pest control job to try and remove the rabbits, then I can't see any problem with it personally. This film may provoke debate, not because of Roy's shooting, which is professional as usual. 
What we are doing is taking the shooter away from behind the scope and placing him or her just feet away from their quarry. It's proof, if you need it, that you have to be accurate. Imagine what the footage would have been like if it had been injured, not killed. Looking for top pest control entertainment? Well, Team Wild is out after rabbits and the police get involved. Click on the angry buck to find out more. Team Wild is also busy launching a new shop this week. Here's Ian Harford. Ian, well known for Team Wild, obviously. Now it's Team Wild Outfitters. What's that? Well, the Team Wild brand is proliferating across the globe, Charlie. Basically, what I do is, with, with Team Wild, we do a lot of hunting. We use a lot of cool gear. And some of our partners, such as Viking Arms and Zeiss and Daystate, they wanted an opportunity, really, of taking advantage of some of the... Uh, uh, the, the, the publicity that we've created. We got a lot of feedback from people that watch the channel saying, well, how can I buy one of these or where can we get these from? So it just seems sensible really to give them an online store where they can go in, have a look at our videos, look at the products we're using and then go buy them themselves. Quite simple, really. It's just like a one-stop shop for anybody who wants to hunt with cool equipment. Ian's shop has got enthusiastic support from Country Pursuits TV. Here's what Malcolm Barnard has to say. Well, I've had a look at the vehicles and they look fantastic. Uh, and I've had a look at the clothes as well. You know, real, real tree branded. Um, the real tree patterns are great. Um, you know, everything that Ian's been involved with has worked really well. So, yeah, brilliant. For Malk's take on the Kelmarsh Fair, click here. And there has been plenty of action among other hunting, shooting and fishing channels on YouTube this week. Here's our roundup. Welcome to this week's YouTube Roundup, the best of British and World Wild field sports from across the YouTube community. Roebuck taken with the 243 is Yorkshire Rose Stalking's usual expo of deer stalking excellence. In this film, he has a client out after a roebuck that is completely unaware of what is going on. That's the roebuck, of course, not the client. They have let loose Malcolm Barnard of Country Pursuits TV with a night sight, the new budget night vision unit, and he is using it to sort out local vermin. Fox lovers, look away now. Made by Hunter's Vermin for Airgun TV, David James gives his definitive view on how to clean an airgun barrel. It is similar to paint drying, but of course deeply useful. In the world of British fishing, there's no slippery customer more colourful than a cuckoo wrasse. Dizzy Fish UK has a go at them by kayak. It's acid house angling. Meanwhile, those boys from Denmark, Kinetic Fishing, show they are catching 30 kilogram cod on a special lure. Filmed in March, the snow shows he is not in British water. Pigeon shooting on the roost, self-filming, it's not easy. That's the title of this film by Sir Cout. Self-filming, tell us about it. James Marchington has a fox on his doorstep looking surprised. James specialises in catching wildlife unawares. Snigger, snigger. Old Man's Ball Bag has some of the most incredible catapult or slingshot shooting you could hope to see. This week he is proving that part of the secret is starting them young. You can click on any of these films to watch them. Our YouTube roundup is from henceforth a regular item. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we're back next week and we were also here this time last year when we were out after Roebuck. If you want to see that show, click on my hand. Our show's out every week. Indeed, it's a YouTube show. You can see it on www.youtube.com slash show slash Field Sports Britain, or you can click to subscribe to all our output here by clicking on the subscribe button somewhere up there. Or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, go down to the bottom, you can put your email address into our constant contact form, or click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, and we'll send you news of our wonderful programme every week. It's out Wednesdays, 7pm UK time. This has been Field Sports Britain.